Recently, Chad and I brewed a batch of Bell's Two Hearted Ale. You want to see how it turned out? Stick around. Hey everyone and welcome back. Chad and I are here again to do a little bit of a tasting and go over a recipe that we just brewed recently. Mm -hmm. He came all the way up here in the snow so he really must really wanted to drink this beer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what we uh, did is, is, is that we brewed a clone of Bell's Two-Hearted Ale as published in Brew Your Own magazine and uh, so I took that recipe uh, word for word basically converted it to my brew system and process. I actually just did a recent video on this topic right. Uh, with my with my grandfather about mash efficiencies and why I, I brewed with my spreadsheet right uh, this was one of the reasons for it I actually because when you take a recipe right and you and you want to, con to convert it to your system when people publish a recipe they usually publish it based upon their system and and, and how it brews and how efficient it is right so so I took the recipe out of their magazine and went ahead and converted it for my system on the grandfather and brewed it up. Uh, Chad and I, we did that, uh, right? Yeah, it was a good time. Great time. We had an awesome time that day. Uh, as you can probably see in some of the overlay that I'm probably showing you right now. Yeah. Uh, it, was a, it was a fun day. The brewed on the grandfather as usual with one exception. We just didn't use the app in, the, in, the, in their uh, recipe website. And uh, everything turned out fine, as I talked about in my previous video. So with all that behind us, we're here today about a month later. And we are going to taste the beers. Now, we got a lot of Chris, critic, at least I got a lot of Chris criticism in the past about my beer tasting videos, about not doing it properly, using the triad or the triangle test, right? I mean, I don't really care too much about that stuff. But uh, this time I thought I'd come around to it and we thought we'd do it here. So what we have yeah. in front of us here are three glasses marked uh, on the bottom with um, different numbers and things to to uh, to denote which beer it is the actual real deal or the clone because we have both I want, want to grab a can there chad so this is the bell's two-hearted uh in the cans that we picked up as our 
official control, right? Mm -hmm. And we also have uh, my draft here, off, off camera here, uh, my five gallon keg of, of, of the clones. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna ask my wife, Rachel, off camera here, and while Chad and I, with our backs turned to, to, see, to, to not see what's going on here, she's going to fill up these glasses based upon the triangle test, where two of the three are the same beer, the third one's the other beer. All right, and we'll have to come back and try to determine which one is the odd one out and which one is the real one and, and which one isn't. All right, mm -hmm. so stick around and we'll get that done. And we're back. My wife, she went ahead and took care of this for us. Chad and I left the room and they, she poured it up real nice for us, it looks like, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, I guess at this point, we are free to choose any one of the beers you want to choose from your selection and start evaluating. And we got to pick out the odd one. Uh, so let's start doing that. Huh? I, I, I think I'll work from left to right. I'll work from right to left, eh? <laughs> Okay. Mm. Got a bit of uh, water here. It's a cleanser too. All right. Here we go. Cheers. Probably should have done that the first time. Yeah. Well, I forgot. Mm. Okay. Okay. Oh, 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 wash. Okay. It's all yummy, I don't care. Yeah, both, <laughs> both are good so far, but it, it's still mine. Mm hmm Okay, all right. Mm hmm So now, hmm, which one is it? Hmm. Let's take another look around here. I'm going to get another, another rinse. Let me try it again. Let me try this one again. I'm looking at the color. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, so far they're pretty darn close. I mean, I, I do not know at the moment which one it is and which one's which. Hold on here. Let me. Well, I thought I had it figured <laughs> out until I'm looking at the color. So I'm using the color and the taste to distinguish which one is real and which one is the clown. Okay, so that one tastes that way. That one. Man, <laughs> I thought these two were the same. Now they taste different. Right. Yeah, that's what I said. That's why I used the color, and then it threw me off even more. So, all right, I'll try this. Well, I, I guess we're doing pretty good here if we made the I brew. Mean, yeah, and, I mean, and I can't tell which one's. I can't tell which one is which. So I'm actually kind of impressed. Actually, I thought for sure I would have known because. I just, you know, if, if you brew a beer and, you, and you've been tasting it along its development, you know, from from like fermenter to keg and tasting the hydrometer samples, I thought I, I thought I knew what I was going to get into here, and um, I don't know now. I'm I'm at a loss. So I'm looking. I'm seeing, so I can't tell by taste, but I am looking for vi visual clues now, like foam maybe. I think you didn't stick like a random beer in there and trick me, did you? No. <laughs> So I must say this 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 recipe they they, they published in the Breer Own magazine here is actually pretty good. It's pretty spot on. Um, uh, I actually brewed. If you look at some of my old videos back going back five years or more, I actually brewed a beer called uh, Centennial Ale, and I think I retitled it in hindsight. It was a Bell's clone because that was what my inspiration was for that beer back then. And uh, I and I pulled up. The grain bill for for that and this one and they were there's some differences they were pretty close uh, but I couldn't actually claim that that previous beer was 
it, an actual true clone of this. This one published in the magazine, I, I got to say, um, I'm right. impressed. I think I got to figure it figured out. The deal, okay. I had to move. I had to move glasses around, but I got to figure it out. All right. Um, I think one more time. I think the water actually makes it harder to tell. You're drinking water in between, trying to clean the palate a little bit. Okay. Doesn't doesn't help. Okay. All right. I think I know which one's different. In my one, I mm -hmm. uh, would you want to go first, since you had your conclusion before mine. Um, well, sure, but um, I did move these two glasses. That's oh, it doesn't okay. matter. All right. Well, so I moved them because it was it was helping my brain figure this out. All right. So which one do you think is the odd one first? The odd one is this one. Okay. On my far right. And okay. It was in the middle. I moved it. Okay. Just uh, just since we're going uh, step by step here. So now we have to pick the odd one out. I'm picking this one out as my odd one. Okay. It's hard to tell. Okay, so now we got that. So he picked this one. Mm -hmm. I picked this one as as my odd one. These are the these two are the same in my opinion. Mm -hmm. This is the odd one. He's and you're saying that those two are the same. These two are the same, and that's the odd one. Even though there's differences, but yes, I think these two are the same. This is okay. The odd one. So now we got to determine one, which one do we think is the real deal and, and which one's the uh, fake. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I think this one. Uh, if you want me to tell you now, I will. Yeah, because I think we're ready to do, to do. Otherwise, we'll spend a half hour of their time oh, uh, debating. Um, <laughs> All right. So, uh, what do you think? Well, I can tell you right now. I think this is one's a little bit more bitter. Um, it does look a hair darker, but it could be just the lighting because we're kind of in this corner and the lights are all around. But I'm going to go with this one being the real one, and it is a little bit more bitter on the end, and that's why I'm thinking it's the real one. This one is a little bit cleaner on the end, but very similar overall taste, beer, yeast, it's all very similar. It's hard to tell, but this one does have more bitterness lingers, so I'm going to think these two seem to be the same. So I'm going to stick with these as your clone. Okay, okay, all right. From from the, what we made. Okay. And this is the original. All right, so Chad, okay, Chad saying, original clone. I still haven't decided that yet. I still think they they're still comparable. I, I think this one's different. <clears throat> I, I think the the tastes are very similar. What's what's making me think it's a little differently is that the foam retention uh, and the size of the bubbles here is a little different on this one than the other two. And uh, it makes me think that, that that these two are similar. I mean, so so mine's more of a visual clue more than yeah. a taste clue. If you look at mine, there's no just the foam settled out. I don't have a, a, an angry beer on my side. Yeah, so I would have to say. This is tough, guys. I, I can still drink it. Okay, so these two are the same for sure. Okay. And that's your odd one out. I think this one is my homebrew, and I think these two are the real deal. All right? So 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 those two are the real ones. Mm -hmm. I'm saying these two are the real ones. These two are your clone. Oh, okay, all right. Clone, clone, real, real. real. I hope that makes sense to you. Yeah. Okay, so so we got to check now. Yeah, so now we got to check here. So okay, so okay again, re reiterate, clone, real, real, real clone. clone. Okay, yes. so so I'm saying this is my clone. So we can look at the bottom of the, of the glasses. On the bottom of the glasses, I already put markings on there indicating what was supposed to go in them. We had not seen this until just now. Oh, Son man. of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this is the Rachel real beer. Me. This is the real beer. This is the Bell's beer. This this beer that I thought was my clone is the real deal. Okay? Mm hmm These two, clone, clone. These two are the clones. I was I had it backwards. So that's pretty impressive. What was your um result? I failed miserably. Well, I said this was the real one and this was the clone. And I look at the bottom of my cup and it says clone. <laughs> so I was I so was, so, I was fooled. so you were wrong and I was wrong. And so now I gotta look at these. Hold on. Okay. That one says bells, bells. And that one says bells. bells. Son of a bitch. So right, well, yours is better then. Well, I'll pick that out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so but you notice we both had opposite opinions, right? Mm -hmm. I thought my uh, I thought the the real deal was a clone, and you thought the clone was the real deal. I thought I was convinced this was the real deal. It had a little darker color, I think. Okay. And it, it was a little bit bitter on the end. And okay. And these 
are the same. So whatever, whatever they were, they were the same. Basically, so, a split decision. Yeah. So it's again. That's why they do these triangle tastings, right? Is is to get out to help get rid of the bias that you think that you don't have uh, when it comes to trying the beers. And uh, we we were both fooled for opposite reasons. So that must say that the yeah. that the recipe. I'm a little upset. I was fooled. <laughs> Was that yeah? This recipe was right, right on, man. Um, you know, and to let you know, I can't show you the recipe in the magazine, folks. I don't have copyright permissions to do that from them, oh. so I can't show you the inside of the magazine. But what they I can buy it themselves. But you can buy an issue yourself. I'm not promoting this magazine. I, I subscribe to it. I'm, I'm not uh, an affiliate. I'm not making money on this at all. Uh, but so I'll show this on screen here a little bit. I actually brewed this now. Uh, per my spreadsheet, like I had talked about in that previous video. This is the old version 2.2.5 of my spreadsheet, right? Well, I brewed it, realized the efficiency was less than what I estimated. So for those of you who want to brew this, I have this, I'll have the original as brewed recipe sheet on my website and on the video description down below. I also, for your benefit, revised it to a corrected efficiency uh, spreadsheet so I actually took the real efficiency and skilled up the grain bills and hops a little bit to get the same recipe outputs and and so the next time I, I brew I, I would I would brew this one instead to make it even more accurate to, to the recipe but as we saw we still couldn't tell the difference between our original version of the recipe and the updated one that I, I did for you and just just to be complete on this uh, I also have a version 3 of the brewing spreadsheet coming out so I went ahead and populated the same recipe on that so take your pick i'll have three of these on the uh, website and in the video description down below for you to try and it, and and this is interesting if you want to compare what we brewed originally with um what i brewed five years ago or so my centennial ale uh i look at the the, the grain bills and they're and i'll put them on screen very very similar um but uh this was actually spot on in, in my opinion yeah like i said <clears throat> I originally thought this was the real beer, and it actually is Larry's clone, uh, or from the magazine recipe. But the uh, I actually I like it better, and it's, honestly, I I do. Um, this one has more of a almost an Oberon wing to it, like it has that like weedy taste to it. Oberon. They have that recipe in here too. <laughs> Maybe we should brew that next time, huh? Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, uh, I digress. Back to the beer. Yeah. So, it's good. It's good either way. Mission accomplished, folks. They uh, they didn't fool us. They actually pu uh, published, I think, a valid recipe on their website there. So uh, in, in the magazine, I mean. So um, man. So anyway, six, I, let's not trade this out beyond uh, well, ten minutes. Well, and, thank uh, you for having me come out here and be part of the uh, whole brew process earlier on and uh, now tasting it. It's mm -hmm. awesome. It's so awesome. and Chad's gonna probably gonna be here for a, a little bit longer today because we gotta finish these samples uh, as well. The not, snow not is complaining. He's not complaining. Same. The snow is starting to accumulate outside because it is a January day and snow storms yeah. coming through. It was fun. It was fun. Uh, so to make it worth Chad's drive up here because he's about an hour away, he's he's gonna go home with a, a growler or two of the beer. Uh, so yeah. don't feel bad for him. <laughs> I win. <laughs> he wins too. When I lost. All right. Hey. Well. Cheers, man. Um, yeah. I'm gonna take well, this one. And... Well, this is the clone. So pink. Cheers. Mm. All right, folks. Talk to you all later. See you next time. Later. Man, dude, this is, this is something, man. Yeah. I can't believe this. this I thought I had it figured out. I thought I didn't realize what she'd done or how the glasses were really set up. But, yeah, I, I knew these were the same, but I just thought they were the clone, and I was wrong. Yeah, I thought mine was going to taste thinner because I, I had the lower efficiency, mm -hmm. and it turned out that well you said it'd be more bitter because it would have less sugar and that's true it, and the sugar it, ba bitter it does taste more bitter to me but i actually prefer it this going back to this one knowing that these two are different um i'm definitely going with i have like it's like i got an oberon wing to it like almost a little bit of a wheat and, and i remember years ago when we used to my son had a party years ago when you were there, and I bought one of those. Oh yeah, like the those kegs, little barrels. Yeah, the bag. Yeah, they go in your fridge. Yeah, and it was too hearted. And my brother-in-law at the time brought it, I and remember. Uh, yes. and uh, I never had it before that. And it was it was a little bitter for me. I was getting into the IPAs at the time, so mm -hmm. uh, not a real big beer drinker. Never drank 
Bush, you know, Bud Light, or I never drank that stuff. Never, you know, I had kids young, so I didn't spend a lot of time at the bar. But the, uh, you know, getting into this kind of beer, um, this was my first experience, was the Two Hearted. And I actually, after about two glasses, I felt it and I was having fun and I liked it. So it doesn't taste the same to me now as it, I remember it then. And I don't know if it's just all in my head or. Well, you're welcome to read the history behind it here because they actually go back into the. I think they point out that they changed the recipe. I think um, between the '90s and the and the and the 2000s, but but you had it since then, so that maybe yeah. there's some other reason. Now, if you're if we're going to talk about history, I started drinking Bell's beers back in the mid '90s, back in 1995. I, I remember very specifically. I I got a new job as a as an engineer in an aerospace company in Skokie, Illinois, just north of the city here, and. Um, I was just getting into the craft brew scene because I was in my early 20s. I actually had finally had a real job after years of school and and being in the army, right? And and uh, there was this bar in Ravenswood, on Ravenswood or in the Ravenswood neighborhood. I think Rachel's been to, right? You've been to that years ago when we started dating uh, when I was living in the city. They had an outdoor beer garden and stuff. Oh yeah. And um, and I started drinking with what, what was called Bell's Amber, and and. Uh, Back then, the craft brew scene had, wasn't really quite what it was um, today, obviously. No. I mean, you, you, like you had both oh, kinds. No. You had old style and old style light. Yeah. Right? Uh, so <laughs> Bell's Amber, I thought, wow, this is great. And, and uh, I was hooked on, on, on good beer ever since. And uh, and so this company Bell's, the, the original, which which is also, I think, in this magazine. I think I'm, I might brew that for a, for a nostalgic reason. But but then they went on to like brewing Oberon. The ale you're referring to. Yeah, it was, okay. it, it was the amber ale. The amber ale, yeah. And then years ago, we had what's now called Oberon. But when I was drinking it back in the mid '90s, about the, about the same time I was drinking the amber ale, it was called Solson because uh, it had the the big logo of the sun mm. on it, right? And it's called Oberon now. And and if, and if you read the history in, in this article in here, it'll tell you that they 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 had some copyright or trademark issues with the with the different company that was using the same term, so they had to rename it to Oberon. Same beer, but uh, when Oberon came out, I thought, well, what, what happened to Solson? <laughs> you know, kind of like where did it go? Well, I like that beer. I didn't know it was the same beer apparently at the time. And they got other ones in here too that I would like to brew. Hop Slam. Yeah, Hop Slam. Hop Slam, I think, might be my next beer. because And, and actually, Hop Slam is about to come out Monday. That's what I was saying. So I think um, as You're soon saying. as I can get another brew day scheduled, this month is kind of busy. Maybe early February, we'll come back and we'll uh, brew a uh, five-gallon batch of Hop Slam. Yeah, hmm? that, that sounds great because Hop Slam will actually be available, uh, I think, Monday uh, coming up here. So... We actually have some real hop slam to compare to the uh, homemade version. Well, don't drink it all because I want them to be because I can't get my hands on it. It's like it's it like sells out around well, here like crazy. Well, I got the inside scoop. My buddy of mine he works at a liquor store, and uh, he says they have it already. They just can't sell it till Monday. So he says they have uh, I think twelve cases personally. But the rumor from what he says is that the this it's not as plentiful this year as it was last year, so it won't linger around okay. as long. So he said, if we want it, we have to buy it because it won't be around. It's just, it's just not there. I don't know if they didn't brew as much or they didn't, whatever happened. But uh, or oh, they're distributing to wider areas and having yeah. less per square. Yeah, they're probably trying to outreach and they're they're just thinning out the batches. I don't know, but he, right. I think he said they had twelve cases just sitting there, and that was pretty much all they were going to get. All right, so. here's the plan, folks. I think Chad or I, if I can find it, we're going to hoard some of that hop slam, not drink it. And uh, next well, time around, I'll hoard some, drink some, and then save some. <laughs> that's a better plan. Yeah, for him at least. <laughs> and then we'll uh, brew a batch of it again, probably on the grandfather because it's still winter around here. We'll we'll do a small five, 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 five gallon batch, just like we did here, and we will come back a month after that, like we just did here today, and we'll taste those. Yeah. Yeah. You think that's the plan? Yeah. Well, I got good good hopes because this turned out really well. I yeah. Mean, actually, you can see from my glasses which one I prefer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, I mean. Here's the recipe. I can't show it on camera, folks, again, but here's the recipe for that. Oberon, Amber Ale. There's a lot uh, of them. Holy crap. Hop, Hop Slam. slam. Uh, Quinonan Falls. I never had that I one. I never had that one. And then um, that's it. I think they all published here. But uh, oh. Hop Slam, that's going to be our next one, I think. i never even seen the Quantum Falls. And I haven't seen Quantum. that one here. It's a IPL, an India Pale Lager. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Well. I don't even know if I want to try that. I've funny. never been a fan of, of, of uh, 
any pale lagers, IPLs. The, the, the ones I've had so far, it's like, well, what's the difference between this and a and a IPA? It's just basically a really hop, hopped up bitter lager. I, I don't know, mm. whatever. All right, so Joey, is, yeah. pause. I like Rachel sitting there because I, I I feel like I'm talking to somebody. <laughs> Having a camera there, I just, I feel weird. Like, Larry gets used to talking right, to the camera yeah. like it's people he communicates with. Right, right, right. But just having a face over there <laughs> helps because I could, like, talk to us three right, yeah. and the camera's just getting it. So, my wife is off camera, sitting on a chair watching us and laughing at us here on uh, camera drinking yeah. here, so. Yeah. Oh, 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 she's oh, coming oh. in. Very quickly. She's coming in. Say this Hi. is my wife, Rachel. Rachel. She's the, uh, pour. She poured it here. <laughs> my, uh, my, uh, my, my better half. And uh, the off-camera helper here I, until just now. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, cheers, hon. Uh, okay. A little sample. Cheers. Salute. Yay. Mm -hmm. Notice that she's uh, pausing to, to drink it because she doesn't like hoppy beers. So. No. What is that? <laughs> she likes more of the. Uh, smile. She's more of a wine drinker, but also you, you've been drinking some of those uh, dragons milk. Mm -hmm. uh, you like dragons? Bourbon stouts, some oh, of the Goose like Island uh, yeah. bourbon counties. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I got about halfway through a bottle of that and had to choke the rest of it down because I just couldn't do it. <laughs> Stouts, dragons, milk, I couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, thank you for for like pouring for us here because I honestly I was I was completely baffled here because I didn't know which was which. Now again, I forgot already. Uh, this is the clone. Oh, I'm moving around. See, I fooled myself. Mm -hmm. This is the clone. See, I was actually going to reach for this one. I didn't fool myself because you this can see bell. you can see which one I'm drinking, and it's actually Larry's clone. It's got the C on the bottom of it. Yeah. I'm 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 amazed. I mean, even even the color. I mean, once I mean the color is not exact. One's a little slightly hazier than the other, but they're both a little hazy because of the dry hopping. Uh, in fact, the recipe didn't even call for any kind of clarifiers in the boil, like a roll flock tablet, like I would normally use. Because there's no point in trying to clarify your beer in the boil if you're going to put four ounces worth of uh, dry hops yeah into your beer because it makes it cloudy anyway yeah so. i think I, I reminded you to put a warloff tab and you're like what's the point what's the point it's going to be dry hop like mm -hmm. crazy so all right well thank you hun for uh for helping out you're so this is my wife you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, again cheers <laughs> would you want something else to drink besides the uh beer no we got a wine Pinot Grigio. We got <laughs> We got wines galore. Yeah. You know, this is that homemade wine that I oh. made back uh, about two months ago. This is that kit wine that. that I have not yet released the video for, but I have recorded footage to produce one. It's a 2008 Washington Merlot. My first kit, uh, kit wine with, with the grape skins. Hope, high hopes for this. I also have other wines I've made in past vintages, all hidden behind all the bottles. Bottles overhead, bottles behind us, bottles below us. Know from the camera. So... <laughs> Anyway, uh, that's basically it. We'll just finish our beers and move on. Huh? Mm -hmm. We were yeah. full. The recipe's good. Mm -hmm. Very good. So that, that's good, good uh, high hopes for the hop slam then. And I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Oberon is very unique. It's definitely a wheat beer. I can only drink so much of it. Wheat beer, I, I get the same issue with most wheat beers. I, they're good in small doses, unless you're making a certain style of beer, like that wit beer that I make with mm. the orange peel and the coriander. Which mm. I like. It, to me, it's a wheat beer, but it doesn't mm. taste like wheat-y. It tastes mm -hmm. like a refreshing, like, I, I call it the the Arnold Palmer of beers, or the iced tea the iced of the beers, beers. <laughs> you know? Kind of because it's very refreshing, especially yeah. on a hot day. Uh, most, most wheat beers, most American wheat beers, I don't like American wheat beers, generally speaking. Mm. Oberon's an exception. I'll drink that, but I can't drink a whole six pack of that in one sitting. No, 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 no. no. I mean, I could, like, if me and my buddy pick up a six pack, I could drink three of them, but I'm done. Like, I don't want any more wheat beer. You know what I'm saying? I'm done. <clears throat> we drank, a, me and Rob drank a, um, I said American Indian Pale Ale. It was a new beer. We never tried it. We just happened to stop at Jewel, and it was there. And the beer we were looking for wasn't. And we tried it. It was actually really good. I, I, I preferred it. Rob said he'd never buy it again, although it wasn't horrible. But I wish I knew what it was called. I don't remember. Hmm. So the next beer I'm brewing here is probably, because I wanted to do a stout this winter, like a bourbon ma maple aged stout. And I never got around to it because when this issue came out, I said, I, I'm brewing these beers first before I forget to do them. Because I've been wanting to brew a hop slam, like Chad knows, for, uh, I don't know, a little well, while, we were, a couple we were, years. We were actually were looking online and researching some stuff, and my buddy sent me some stuff to figure out how to clone the hop slam. 
but then here they are, all of a sudden they just decide to give it out. So I guess it, maybe I'm I'm sure maybe the hops that they're using versus what we end up getting might vary slightly. So mm -hmm. maybe they're not worried about giving you the recipe because they know it's we're the original. Yeah, yeah. Like you're not going to make it as good as yeah. we do, and you're still going to buy it from us. You know, kind of an attitude. Yeah. Yeah, I, I texted a guy I know um, the, the other night about this uh, it, this issue that I was drinking a clone of the Bell's Two Hearted that I brewed. He said, "Really?" I said, "Where'd you get it?" He said, "Where'd you get it from?" I said, uh, "It was TJ actually, or TJ, our old neighbor TJ." Uh, and I said, um, "I said, well, it was published in a recent issue of Brew Your Own Magazine." I said, "In fact, they got like five or, or so of them in there, including the, the more popular ones like Hop Slam." And, and it was like. How, how do they stay in business by giving out the recipes? Well, um, that's a very good question, right? Because you're like, well, why, why are they giving? I mean, it, it, it's, like, it's like a chef at a famous restaurant giving his actual recipe out. So I was a little skeptical when we brewed this. I thought, well, they changed something in the recipe, right? They, they changed something. Like they left something out or they substitute something different. And that still, be, still may be the case, but Chad's, Chad and I's taste testing proved otherwise. He thought it was one way, I thought it was the opposite way. We were, we were both confused as to what was the real thing. Yeah. And um, I must say that um, the recipes they published here are pretty pretty accurate. The only thing that's different, according to the article, is, is the yeast strain. They have a, their own house yeast that they used. Ooh. And uh, we don't have access to, to their house yeast. I, but I bet if we took one of their cans, maybe we can, like, culture one. And I was actually going to bring that up because a lot of times it settles at the bottom of the can, especially mm -hmm. Oberon. Mm -hmm. Sure, so you can culture the yeast, mm -hmm. but I just used a U.S. Safale US05, like the yeast I used on the Azaka Ale we right. did this summer and, yeah. and, and other beers before. It's fine. They, they say they use American Ale 1056, which is a, a yeast, liquid yeast. I've used that many years. But um, didn't seem to matter. So going back to, to the topic, though, of, of what of why they would give out the recipes and, and ruin their business. Honestly, the recipe is only half the equation. Process is, is the other half of the problem. Mm -hmm. You can get the same recipe from a source and have 10 different people brew it and probably get 10 different tasting beers. Yeah. Right? And um, so they can give out recipes in, in, in the brewing industry. Plus, uh, my hat's off to Bell's um, because they had the fortitude and the courage to publish these recipes, knowing that confidently. And plus, reading about the history of Larry Bell, the owner, the the founder of the, of the company, the fact that going back that he was a home brewer, just like we are here, uh, and um, you know, it's nice to see him t tipping his hat to us home brewers by offering these recipes out there. I, I don't think a lot of companies would do that, but knowing that he is, uh, mm -hmm. you know, confident and uh, helpful enough to allow us super fans to actually brew his beer super awesome so thank you very much yes yeah, especially being seasonal you, you know you can only get it for a short time mm -hmm. once a year yeah so that's good yeah awesome all right well that's it i guess yep yeah cool. well I, the, the yeast you ended up using <clears throat> i i like that yeast what was the the other yeast the Eng older the english one the 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 english so4 yeah that, that was the one i called beery because we, 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 we actually made two different beers and we tried it and I said, this beer is very beery. And I, I don't personally prefer it. I could drink it, but I don't prefer it. It reminds me of beer. You know what I'm saying? It's got that, that English, I, I'm just using that word, but it, that's what they call it. But it just has mm -hmm. that tavern like taste, smell, you know, to it. Yeah, yeah, I guess I can see that. And that's where I get beery. And, 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 yeah. uh, and that word spewed out of my mouth, and I got a lot of crap for that. The weirdest to say. Well, yeah. a lot of new brewers, and maybe ones who are not so new, don't maybe not understand the impact of the yeast strain used can really change the flavor of yeah. the beer, right? And we discussed that on that video, comments on, on that video, uh, the taste testing we did, uh, we, we discussed that a little, little bit back and forth mm. between a couple guys. And mm -hmm. I said it's amazing the yeast has an effect on a beer. Besides the grain bill, the grain bill don't change. You change the yeast, the beer changes. Yeah, that's correct. And uh, so, so um, like, uh, so for example, this 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 uh, recipe that we brewed here uh, in our tasting, the um, Bell's Two Hearted, they actually recommend uh, a White Labs WLP 001, which is the, the California ale, or the Y Yeast 1056, the American ale, which I use a lot in my recipes, or had been using a lot 
but they also say to use the Cephal yeah. US05, which is what we used what here, we used, yeah. because uh, the dry yeast honestly are so much cheaper. They're what a buck or two a packet, mm -hmm. compared to like eight bucks or more for the li liquid yeast. And with the with the dry yeast, you don't need to make a yeast starter with them because for a five gallon batch, that's more than enough yeast in that packet than, than you need. need. Yeah. Whereas the liquid yeasts, uh, they start to go bad relatively quickly after they've been manufactured, and you need to use them right away. And they still benefit from building them up in a the yeast starter. It was just less work. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you have a beer style that the yeast strain is Important. a big part of it, yeah. like a Belgian wit beer, like I mentioned before, yeah. uh, and it's would, a big part of the flavor. And if I you, would do it. Yeah. yeah. Th then you would use the right yeast strain, no matter where it was dr liquid dry or what it yeah. cost. The, but the, the eight bucks wouldn't matter. If you're going for a specific flavor, mm -hmm. specific taste, you're trying to clone something, mm -hmm. you know, re remake the same beer over and over again, mm -hmm. I'd pay the eight bucks and just do it. Yeah, it's like the zombie dust is mm -hmm. similar. Uh, the, 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 it was very specific, a London ESB ale yeast. And you're thinking, well, London yeast for a beer brewed in Munster, Indiana? Yeah. <laughs> you know, what the heck? Yeah. Well, the, the truth behind that, I, well, this is this is my opinion and from what my experience tells me, it, it, it's a low attenuating yeast, which means it doesn't ferment dry. So the final gravity, rather than being 1.008, would be like 1.018. I mean, uh, you know, it's... So there's residual sugar mm -hmm. still in the beer, residual sweetness, sweetness that that, yeah. that counterbalances a lot of that bitterness yeah. from those really super high alpha hops like the Citra, right? And I and have a lot of fans out there uh, or viewers, subscribers, mm -hmm. commenting um, who who can't get a hold of that beer because they they live in other countries and stuff, right? And they use other substitutes, and they say that they the, the yeast, they you mean. like it, but it's yeah the yeast, yeast. that's that very alcoholic and super dry well because he didn't use a low attenuating yeast right? yeah. they, they used something else so i just tell him to go find something that's got a low attenuation rating and just yeah. substitute that yeah but, or, or ebay or something because i'll tell you what <laughs> ebay <laughs> people can buy stuff everywhere i guess <laughs> mm. order it online wait for it to get there it makes a difference <laughs> all right well uh, let's wrap up the camera and turn it off and uh just hang out and be social I suppose even more so than this because the camera's still going. Yeah. I know it is. yeah. <laughs> trying to find a time to exit. <laughs> yeah. Exit stage right? Or exit. Not, actually, stage left, actually. Stage, stage left. Stage left, exit. <laughs> See y'all. See ya. I'm going to go drink this beer. I'm out. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe.